Hi everyone, I'm Sheila. I'm back again with Raja. This is my 11, 11 month old Aerial Terrier puppy. And um, I do plan to show him eventually uh, when all the COVID stuff is over and we can go back to playing and dog shows again. Um, I want to show him in AKC confirmation. So I haven't really uh, put a clipper to him. He's only been hand stripped all this time. And I want to share with you our progress uh, videos and just to show you my thought process on how I plan to get him ready. First for things showing. first, I plan to cart him and I am going to be using a classic, a classic knife. It looks like this. And I do have my stones as well, uh, some stripping stones. And um, so first things first, I'm planning to cart him and then we'll go from there. So let's first of all start looking at what we have to work with. As you can tell, he's extremely long. I have not touched his jacket, I would say about a month now. Um, there's a lot of undercoat some gray as well and some tan but uh, a lot of it is on the coat right now so first things first i am planning to cart his coat and i am going to be using a classic knife like this i also have my stones uh, because i am so i have two options right now i can either reset his coat and take it right down to skin or I can roll his coat. And the difference is resetting a coat, just you take basically everything off. Uh, and then rolling the coat simply means just taking off the longest hairs. So there's many, many layers in his coat right now. Many layers meaning different lengths of hair growing at different um, stages. Uh, so the longest hairs would be there for like it's been a month since i really worked his jacket which means that the longest hairs are the oldest ones and then the shorter hairs are the more recently grown layers okay so i am going to be carding him first with my classic so first things first i'm going to be carding him like i showed you with my classic knife and i like to hold the skin pretty firmly when I cut so it's less discomfort for the dog you can grab the skin and I just work the coat and you can tell there's already a lot of undercoat coming out it's all that just very really soft stuff like cotton wool almost um, and as I'm carding him, you can see a lot of that soft undercoat comes out. I just like to simplify my life. If I take out a lot of that undercoat, it makes my life a lot easier because first of all, there's less hair to pull. And second of all, I get the top coat to lay flat. And I, I can actually see what are the layers I have to pull makes my life a lot easier and so I'm at this point I'm thinking okay we have no shows to attend right now so what should I do right so I can reset him take him right down really really short or I can start rolling him and right now my feeling is I think I'm gonna start rolling him just pulling only the longest hairs out and leaving the shorter layers on him and then just go from there another option to carding a dog is using the andis rake this is like super super fine and um i know pe some uh people say if you have a show dog you don't want to use a rake on a dog um, because it might actually pull or break some of that top coat out and you might not have uh a really really beautiful coat because you have broken coat right but I found that this and this rake is actually pretty good it doesn't really cut any of that top coat at all 
and I like to go through this coat with it and if you see only undercoat has been pulled there's no top coat here and it's and it makes my life a lot easier so when I use a rake like this I don't keep it in one spot repeatedly it might cause abrasion so I actually work it around just moving it around like that and then taking out some of that coat see it's just all under coat it's a really nice tool but when i start actually showing him i probably wouldn't use this uh, right now because everything is still shut down pretty much and we don't have any shows in the next three months so i think i can be a little bit liberal <laughs> and not have to be conservative about protecting hair so much because we have no shows yet so that's it i'm gonna keep working the rest of his jacket right now his undercoat is really really profuse because i haven't worked his his jacket for a long time i've been working a lot on his flat work and his furnishings and I've kind of slapped off on his jacket so look at there's so much undercoat coming out so I'm just gonna keep working the entire jacket right now you may notice that right on his neck right here I have more layers growing here in this triangle from the occiput down toward his shoulders because I was blending this into the side of his neck so as you can tell there's a lot less layers here and more layers here so that's what I'm going to try and go for today I'm going to start pulling just this triangle right here at this moment and take it a lot shorter on this side but leave more layers here now, if I was going to reset his coat, I wouldn't need to differentiate between the different layers. But because I'm rolling his coat, I have to be more uh, discerning in what I pull and what I leave behind. So one method is you can use a, a brush like this, a pin brush, and pull the longest hairs to the side. And then use your stone or your knife or whatever you, tool you choose to start pulling mm. I'm going to be a little bit liberal because I've actually been slacking a lot and uh, haven't been working his coat so that's my fault really and what I'm pulling right now is basically starting at the occiput right at the base of the skull right here and it's basically a triangle and I am pulling just the longest bits of hair and some of that undercoat I'm just gonna keep pulling and also I'm checking you see now I have, hold on, I have basically removed some of the longest bits right here, if you can see, and then now I'm going to work down a little bit, and I can take the stuff off this side, and off this side really, really tight, and then continue working. But for me personally, I like working in sections, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the triangle first, and then work the sides. Put down, Raja. Put down. Okay. I've been pulling some of that triangle right here and I wonder if you can see the difference on the video. See how there's now shorter layers here? See that? Versus this stuff that I've been pulling. Can you see? So there's... It's shorter right now here because I've been pulling the long hairs out from this section 
so you can see the difference. So what I'm doing now is rolling a coat, meaning just taking off the longest hairs and leaving the shorter layers on there. And the way I'm doing that is using my stone and only pulling on the outer tip of the hair. So I'm only pulling the longest hairs out. And that way, if I put my stone deeper into the coat, then I'm going to be pulling also the shorter hairs. But I don't want to do that. I only want to roll this coat today. So I'm just pulling out the longest bits. I'm just going to keep working. I'm going to keep working this triangle right here. It's just this puppy. I'm going to just work my way down. I'm using the stone to letting the stone do the work for me and letting it pull only the longest layers out. See how it's actually really, really long? It's almost, I'd say, two and a half inches long right now. So they're pretty long because I've been slacking. <laughs> so what I do is I like to push the skin with my thumb or my hand and allow, allow the hair to pop up, the longest bits kind of pops up. Raja, stop. Stop. So, pushing my... Stop. So I'm actually training the puppy as well to stop turning around. And a lot of, a lot of conditioning and training is required when you're actually training a dog, for sure. Um, you don't want them to make life harder for you, right? So... I'm working right now on this area, right here. And just tipping, just pulling out the longest bits. I wonder if you can see the difference. See, the layers now are a lot shorter. The hair here. And this is still undone. See, very long. So very short, see? I've been working this layer right here. And then it's coming down and it's long again. So what I'm trying to do is just pull just the long bits out from here. See, the just the longest tips. And I'm going to keep working along this spine right here, just along this line, about this, this wide. I worked on here just now, and now I'm just going to work this way. Just this strip right down the spine. I'm just going to be tipping just the longest hairs. You'll see that right now I have him standing instead of laying down. Just now when I was working on the closer part of the back of his neck, I was able to let him lay down and relax. But once I, I reach the base of the neck and I'm going to start working his withers and the rest of his top line, I want him to be standing up so that I can actually see if I want to keep some layers or if I want to take it down shorter. To create a more level top line. I mean, he has a beautiful top line already, but it's really, really easy to make a hole if you're not careful. And then you start having like a camelback lump, so you don't really want that, do you? So I'm gonna work his with this now, right here. And then, so I still have some longer layers here I can pull. And then be really, really careful about um, leaving a little bit of uh, top line or top coat here and some of that filler coat, the undercoat, and not take it too short right here. So let's pull the hair. And I'm still training Papi Raja to to be still, tolerate being cold.
I'm afraid you can't see because my hand my hand's blocking you, isn't it? I've been working on his spine along the ridge right here and also on his left flank and I'm gonna be approaching this very tricky area which is right over where the withers intermeets with his shoulder and what I like to do is normally take it down pretty tight right here uh, to show a better layback of shoulder so this stuff right here is all gonna come off I'm gonna try and record this without blocking you guys so I'm just pulling the skin taut pulling it and just lightly kind of lightly pulling out the hairs that are coming his cowlick is right here you see this where the hair grows in funny directions into like a line this line is the cowlick and immediately just to the right of it this stuff where it um, meets his neck I'm going to uh, transition this into this very very short right here and here it's going to be long short and I'm going to slowly transition just pulling out the long bits and leaving the low, the shorter layers down so it's not totally bald. Um, I could bald him if I wanted to reset his coat, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I just want to um, tip his coat today and roll it so he's not bald for the winter. I'm going to try and do it such that you can still see. Racha! Yeah, what you doing? Hmm? Okay, come on. Good boy, come on. Yeah. We gotta help the folks who are watching, huh? Some people might be watching us. Yeah. Let's see if you can see. So I'm just transitioning. I'm leaving the super, super short layers down there and just pulling the long bits toward this line you want to pull it with the growth of the hair see how here is starting to get really really short that's what we want but leaving some of the top coat layers and i'm just gonna keep working it down He's bored. <laughs> there we go. See, it's already starting to look a bit better. Right here. And just a little bit more. And I'm going to see if I can not block the this phone. Okay. Let's go. Come. Good boy. Wait, Raja. That's a good puppy. Hmm? See if you can show the folks at home. Huh? Yeah. There we go. And see how it's starting to look a lot neater now. And let's see. I might still want to pull this a little bit more. But I'm a lot happier now with the side of this neck right here. It's a little tighter now. I'm going to work down and take this out. So I'm just pulling the skin taut from the neck. Or you can pull on this side up. He's turning his body. <laughs> I'm going to just keep pulling this area right here and take it closer 
without trying to block you guys so that you can still see. It's kind of an awkward angle because of where he's standing and the camera. It's a lot looking a lot better on this side. And now I'm gonna work right here. Let's see if I can't rotate him. Is it gonna block? Nope, it's okay. You take it really tight there, it will showcase the shoulder a lot better. See right here, it still needs to come off. So as you can see, I've been working my line right here, all along this area. Basically, it's about an inch, one inch line right here, um, blending the long bits into really, really short bits. All of this has to be taken out, pulled out to bald right here. That's called the flat work. And I want to just clean up a little bit along right here, <laughs> if you can stop twisting him himself around and uh, clean up where it hits the shoulder as I work toward the front flat work I'm going to take it really really short here so I'm just going to pull his skin back and pull that out pretty tightly stop I'm telling him not to turn his body around. He just needs to learn to be still when I'm streaming, stripping him. It's all about conditioning the dog and training. So now you can tell right here it's all done. And I'm going to start coming this way now start coming down this way as I strip this way you see right here stop yeah it's good I'm gonna take it pretty tight and every now and then you can check your work you know you can use your pin brush and pull and just kind of comb and you can pull the hair to the side or just kind of you know stop brush it a little bit to the side to see the hairs that are sticking out and i can tell it's right here if you can see right here see so i'm gonna pull his skin stop the opposite direction raja stop coming out of the loop. Raja, come on. Yes. Good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah, let me see. That's good. Hmm? Cleaning this area up. See, he's already looking better. So just now, I was laying him on his side to work on his 
on his flank right here. I'm going to be flipping and working on the other side now. So basically just pulling only the longest bits, just the pull, just pulling out the longest layers and rolling his coat. And now I'm actually working my way down his shoulder, as you can tell. And I just wanted to show you guys some of the hairs that I'm pulling. Some of it, can you tell, is gray. Gray is that undercoat. And so I'm pulling both the top coat and the undercoat. But if when I pull the top coat, see how this is fascinating. The hairs that are at the tips are nice in color, but then at the root, it's gray. It's gray and it's almost white. Can you see? So actually, this is the real reason why we strip a dog, like a terrier, is to keep that color. So I'm trying to see if I can show you. See how the color is rich and dark on the, on the ends? But then when you go to the base of the, the hair, it's almost white. See it? There's, there's no color. So when you imagine, see? Can you see? It's like rich color on the tip. Nice nice color on the tip. And then on the, on the base of the hair, it's almost white. So imagine if this was growing on your dog and you just take a pair of scissors and you cut the hair and what's left is just the lighter hair so over time when you clip a dog like a terrier they start going gray and they go lighter and that's the reason because you've you've never allowed the new hair growth to come in including the bulb of the hair it has to come out so that new hairs can start coming in and replace the hair that you've already pulled. So as I'm stripping his shoulder, I wonder if you can see it. I'm just gonna follow direction of growth and try and keep the skin as taut as possible. And I don't just use my palm or my fingers to grab the hair. I sometimes use the back of my forearm too to help me See how I'm using my entire arm to kind of spread the skin kind of as taut as possible. It just makes it easier to pull the hair out. See? Hair that I've just pulled out. And... I like my shoulders done really, really tightly. Um, keep it as fine as possible right here. So all these hairs are really long. They're very, very long. So I'm just pe basically pulling it to almost bare. Because I like my shoulders very, very fine. Well, I mean the hair on that area to be fine. See how that you can really tell from the color and see how the colors change from the base of the hair to the root of the hair. The colors different. I just love seeing this transformation when you pull the old hair out and the new hair starts to come in. The color is so rich and the texture is so wiry. I love that about the terriers. Oh, I love to see the hair coming out. See all the gray hair? All that yucky gray hair is all coming out. Even this part, can you tell? Yeah, it's all white there inside. I want to take it out. I just have to be mindful as I'm approaching his elbow right now. I don't want it to come all the way down to where there's a dip between the shoulder and his upper arm up right here. 
The reason is because I want to have some layers growing out here to blend from the shoulder to the leg. If I take it very tight right here and not leave any fill layer, he will look from the front to have like a hourglass uh, figure and I don't want that. I want a straight line from the shoulder into the arm. So in order to create that nice blend or transition area, it, it's about about an inch, about this wide, about an inch. So I can take my hair down pretty tight, just above that one inch line right here. I can take it very, very tight here, but then I'm gonna start leaving some layers here. So you will see that I will not be coming all the way down. I will be stopping like somewhere here, about an inch away. And then I will just leave uh, the moderate layers on there and pull just the longest bits there. So above that line, I'm going to take him pretty fine. Almost bald, I'd say. Because if, if you were attending a show, you would be more discriminate in what you pull. But since we don't have a show right now to attend, I can be ruthless, you know, pulling as much hair as I want right here i don't have to be super careful but if he was if i was pulling him for a show right now i would be a lot more detailed in what i leave and pull but right now we can just almost take it down to bald and depending also on the time of the year you pull your dog's hair um, i find that when it's colder weather the dogs tend to grow their coat a lot faster just because if you study how hair grows, it's supposed to keep you warm. So I think that when the skin experiences dramatic changes in temperature from pretty warm to like really cold, the hair tends to grow a lot faster. So this is where I stopped so far. I just worked on the longest bits of the jacket and now I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's still a little long right here, so I will still be trimming, but at least I took off the longest layers, you know, at least that's a start. Um, so the next thing I'll be working on would be blending the throat and the neck area and making it really short, as you can tell. He's completely ungroomed right here. I have to take it really short. And uh, I'll make that another video. And then I want to take this down as well. So basically just all the front, front flat work, the chest, the throat, and the front of him. So that's all we have for now. Lots and lots to do in the rear flat work too. So, happy trimming! Hi Raja! Is it happy trimming? Yeah!